Good morning and welcome to today's Daily Reflection. There's a Bible verse that states there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. Now we are proud that here in the UK we believe in an open, tolerant and welcoming country. But is that belief properly reflected in real life? For example, according to a recent government report, women, for example, are on average more likely to enter the workforce with higher qualifications than men, but earn less per hour. They are more likely to take on unpaid work, three times as likely to be working part-time, and likely to save less into their private pension. And while we might like to believe slavery to be a thing of the past, today it is a thriving business worth millions worldwide, even here in the UK. That Bible verse comes from the reading set for today, from Galatians chapter 3. Before, the way of faith in Christ was available to us. We were kept under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. It is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs and and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. This is a word of the Lord. So what was the writer thought to be Paul trying to say? It all goes back around 4,000 years ago to the days of Abraham as told in the Old Testament book of Genesis. When God spoke to Abraham and made him an offer that if he left his home and family, his home with his family, that God would make him a great nation and bless him. Abraham believed what God had said and he accepted the offer. Paul writes that God gave Abraham a promise, a promise that he was forming a people and he was beginning with Abraham. That promise was what worked out in the chapters that followed Genesis. At the time, Paul was writing this letter to the churches in Galatia. They were among the first churches to have experienced a mixed community of both Jews and Gentiles together. But some Jewish believers had started to spread the idea that the Gentiles had to become like the Jews in order to be really part of God's people, part of God's covenant. They had to be circumcised. They had to follow the laws of Moses. Paul wrote this letter to convince them that this this wasn't true, that in fact, if they did that, they'd be abandoning the very message of the gospel itself. The Ten Commandments and many other laws that defined the Jews at the time, they believed that because the law of Moses had been made at Mount Sinai, that with the children of Israel were all required to follow to the letter. The Ten Commandments and the many other laws defined and regulated almost every aspect of Jewish life, matters of morals, religious practice and government, as well as justice, commerce, property rights, slavery, marriage and social interactions. It required circumcision for males, animal sacrifices and strict Sabbath observance. Ceremonial rules divided animals into clean and unclean categories. Clean animals could be eaten, unclean animals could not. This law had been essential for how God's people understood themselves for almost 1500 years. So if Paul was going to say that the law of Moses was no longer necessary, he had to explain why, obviously. In Paul's mind, this law had been like a fence that that had been meant to surround and protect the people of Israel from the pagan beliefs of their neighbours. Or as Paul himself believed, he would not have known what sin was except through the law, through the lens of the law. But the time was right for Jesus to break through that fence, and he invites us to live beyond that fence by believing in him. But the Jews had forgotten about the promise to Abraham, 
they re all they remembered was the law of Moses, but they forgot that the promise was made before the law. Paul sees us now as heirs of that promise to Abraham because we are all baptised the same way, meaning there is no difference between Christians, no matter what their origin. There is not one baptism for rich and one for the poor, not, not one baptism for Jew and another for Gentile. In Paul's time and in some places today, everyone was immersed entirely over their heads. Everyone came up as wet as everyone else. Being baptised into Christ is an experience that we all share. Imagine, for example, a graduation scene when all the graduates wear the same loose-fitting robes. Everyone looks exactly the same. It's even hard to tell male from female in those loose-fitting robes. Everyone looks alike. After baptism, like those similarly dressed graduates, we are clothed in Christ. So when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. What Paul was saying is that when we look at each other, we shouldn't make any different distinctions. Our cultural background should make no difference. Our baptism, our graduation robes, if you like, cover whatever we are wearing underneath. It doesn't matter whether we, we are wearing a Jewish prayer shawl or a Roman toga, the rags of a poor man or the finery of a rich. Clothed in Christ, we all look the same. We are all the same. The final fulfilment of the promise made to Abraham is described right at the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation, when people from every background will be welcomed into God's community, when we are told that all nations will be blessed. When the writer of the book of Revelation wrote, There before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne in front of the Lamb. People from every background are being welcomed into God's community. But as in the days when Paul was writing this letter, like the Jewish believers he was criticising, we are still building and erecting our own fences even today. As a society, we are guilty of enslaving others for profit, of leaving behind and ignoring the plight of too many people through not paying workers a fair wage of people in our own communities having to rely on loan sharks or food banks. We treat those who don't think or look like us differently or might have different beliefs. God will eventually gradually tear down all these fences. That's the message of Galatians. That's the message of the gospel itself. Our encouragement today is to dare live beyond the fence. So to finish with a prayer, Lord, help us to be spiritual graduates, to live right outside that fence of intolerance, to fight the fight that is worth fighting, to be serious about our faith, and to let the spirit of your Son into our hearts, to grant us intimacy with you, oneness with each other, and a serious Christianity about our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever you do the rest of the day, rest of this week, try and do it with a smile. Bye for now.